Just got back from Micro Center, and today we've got some fun stuff in store. We're gonna be building this beast. Game begin. Game over. All right, welcome back to Tekken Toys. It's been a couple months since we have actually put anything out because as you can tell, we are on a brand new set in what you guys may have seen as the hit factory that was in progress, but we're here now, we're moved in, and I am ready to start getting back to reviewing some fun stuff. So like I said, today we are gonna be building a nice new gaming PC for the hit gaming team that we are putting together. So let's get into it. All right, so starting out, we have this Hulk of a case, the Corsair Crystal Series 680X. This thing is an absolute monster. Um, the way we're doing this is we are gonna be building five white and five black ones for the gaming team. And what we've got right now is the white one. So we'll go ahead and get this monstrosity unboxed. All righty. And there she is. The beauty of this empty case that soon will be a lot prettier. One of the cool things that I love about it coming from a PC building background is this nice little swing open door that you can actually remove. Um, there's three screws on the back, pull it off, it's easy to access. You've got plenty of space on this back side for storing all your cables, just general cable management, and the power supply also goes in here as well. I think it has a total of like 10 drive bays in there. You have your traditional 3.5 inch hard drives and then space for some solid state drives as well. But the fun thing is with the motherboard we're gonna be using, it actually has three M.2 slots on there. So we're not even gonna worry about those. So. Without further ado, let's get into it. I've built in this case a couple times, so the first thing I like to do just so I don't have to deal with the panel is just take it straight off. Alrighty. So yeah, the panel comes on and off pretty easily. So once you actually get into it, there is a ton of space for building inside of here. Um, in one of the completed builds we have, you have about, let's say about an inch or two of space on the front side because there's no cables and then plenty of gap underneath once we've got a motherboard in. But on the front half, we have three Corsair fans, uh, all RGB of course, because everyone knows RGB helps you game better. And then on the back, it's just a plain black uh, 120 millimeter exhaust fan. On the back side, we have all of this empty space for the power supply, any physical hard drives that we wanna use, and then just general cable management. There's also a little bit of space for fans if we were to pop this front panel off. Based off my experience with the previous ones, one of the things I like to do with these is take this out just because we aren't going to be using it at all. If we want to load this up with some more storage, we can pop this back in pretty easily. It's a two screws and a clip. So that's one of the options you've got with this case, but you have all of these little feeds to keep your cable management nice and clean. And then it also has a Corsair bridge built in, which connects with their IQ software. So if you want to customize the lights for your PC, you have all the options to. We're actually not going to be using the one that's built into this because we have a Corsair water cooler that comes with a better quality bridge for all the lights and fans and the pump and everything. So we'll end up bypassing this. So what we're gonna do is get into the motherboard first and get that going. All right, so the motherboard we're going with is the Asus Z590 Gundam Edition motherboard. We really went with this one just because it's a gorgeous board to work with. And it's also, I mean, it's just so clean. All right, out of the gates, they include a Wi-Fi adapter. So you got a little Wi-Fi antenna. And then of course, what everyone wants, is this nice, clean motherboard. So it also comes with, couple little adapters. You've got some 
SATA adapters, and then just what everyone needs, instructions on a CD, because everyone still uses a CD drive. All right, so in just real quick, when you're working on electronics, some people will say it's a myth, but ESD is a thing. Always wear an ESD strap when you're building a PC, just in case, even if you don't think it's a real thing, do you want to risk zapping the couple thousand dollar build you just got, or even the five or six hundred dollar build you saved up for painstakingly, luckily got the parts, and then when you're building it, it's fried as soon as you try to boot it up. So always wear an ESD strap. Mine came with my iFixit ProTech tool kit. So shout out to iFixit for making the best tools. And here is the gorgeous Asus Gundam Edition motherboard. So it's beautiful on the front, but on the back, we get a very similar look, that nice graphic. And so the parts we're gonna be throwing on this motherboard, we've got an Intel, the 11700K. Um, we actually got a total of 10 of these because we are building 10 PCs as we go through for the hit gaming team. And then we also have some Vengeance RGB Pro SL. We've got the, I think these are 32 gig kits of DDR4, but again, RGB, so it's gonna help you game better. Everyone knows this, I know this. I'm still trash at video games because I don't have RGB. Got that nice little processor, but this is gonna do everything we need and then some for all the games, streaming, everything we plan on doing. So we'll go ahead and work on getting this guy popped in. If you've never built a PC before, this is one of my least favorite parts. I've built probably about two or 300 computers in my life. Every single time it comes down to the RAM, this is the part that just makes my skin crawl because it's going to feel like you're about to break something. And some boards are different. This one has four channels, but the big thing is you want to make sure that you are putting the RAM in the correct slots. Um, on boards that have four, you'll have 1A and 1B, and then 2A and 2B, which are usually color-coded in some capacity. It's generally every other one is gonna be the matching channel. So and this is the part I hate because you will hear a audible click, but it does require a decent bit of force. Make sure you're putting it in the correct direction. Otherwise you are going to end up with a broken memory channel. And then for storage, we have the Samsung Evo 980 Pro M.2 solid state drives. So, and then to install the M.2 on this motherboard, so with these, you can either use a Phillips head or a flat head to pull these pieces off. Now, one of my favorite things about these boards is that instead of you needing to screw the M.2 in, you just pop it in like so, and it sits just like that. So man, if you were to do that, it just pops right up. And then on the back, you've got your little bit of thermal. We're just gonna peel that boy off. Hopefully line everything up properly. Wanna make sure you tighten these down quite well without damaging the board. Just wanna make sure that thermal pad makes good contact. Um, and the top right here is aluminum, so they're very good at absorbing that heat. And we are good to go to start mounting this in the case. So now that we've got the board all ready to go, we are good to mount it in here. Now, this is the part where I usually end up taking out the storage bays, but for now, just for this build, I'll leave them in. All right, so now the tricky thing with these big cases is just how massive they are building on a desk, but they do slide in quite nicely. So we're gonna go ahead and work on getting this guy mounted in. And with this case specifically, I know some others do it, but this does have guiding pegs in it. So that way everything lines up perfect. You don't have to worry about screwing it up. As long as you don't install it upside down, you're good. If you manage to install it upside down, I will be impressed because there's not enough clearance. So on this board, you've got seven or eight screws to keep it all clamped down nice and tight. When nothing goes flying when you're gaming as you drive down the road. One thing I do like to touch on is don't over tighten anything, like get it tight, but don't keep going at it till you can't twist. Do keep going till you can't comfortably twist, but anything past that you do risk damaging the motherboard or any other components. So just be a little gentle. They're not as sensitive as people think, 
but it is better to err on the side of caution so you don't break your nice new toys. All right, and just like that, we now have our nice new motherboard mounted and ready to go. So what we're gonna go on to next is getting the power supply in, and we ended up going with a Seasonic Focus modular power supply. That way we don't just have a rat's nest of cables in the back. So this is the power supply we're gonna be using. We did go with an 80 plus gold just because we want them to be efficient and hopefully not burn anything down. Uh, Another thing to always remember, if you're gonna cheap out on things with a PC build, cheap out on the case. At the end of the day, you may come out with a couple cuts. It's not the end of the world. Don't cheap out on a power supply. You have a better chance at burning stuff down. One of my buddies, a couple weeks ago, his grandma actually lost one of her solid state drives because she was using a little $30 power supply she got from some discount tech store. And she ended up losing the entire computer because it just set on fire randomly. Don't cheap on parts if you can afford to. If you can't afford to, don't cheap on the power supply. That's the one thing. Now, because of the board we're using and the case we're using, a lot of these cores are actually not gonna get used at all. So it'll leave a lot of clearance room in our back, keep things nice and cool. Um, the back panel actually has an exhaust vent so that this just blows straight out versus back or back into the case itself. Now, nice thing about this case, I mean, most cases do the same thing, but with this one, make sure I line it up properly, just slides in nice and clean. And there are brackets on the inside of this, so that way you can adjust where the power supply sits and make sure there's no wiggle room, which is gonna help with the fan and just keep everything nice and tight as you build, move, do whatever you wanna do. The world's your oyster. Now these you wanna make sure are nice and tight. That way, since the fan's going to be spinning, you want less vibration. Keep everything nice and concise and also keep your noise levels down. All right. Just like that, we've got it all good to go in there. All right, so now we're going to start feeding some of these cables through. One of the things I prefer to do, especially when I know stuff's not going to be used, I like to just start ripping stuff out. So like I mentioned earlier, because we're gonna be using a water cooler that includes a better bridge for all the fans, to make everything a little bit easier, we're just gonna go ahead and unplug these. And so this is just a personal preference. I prefer to unwrap everything and pull it out from where it was fed through, especially since there are a handful of components that I know we're not going to be using. Always want to try and keep everything as tight and clean as possible. So one thing to mention, just because I have a feeling that some of the people tuning in have never built a PC before. If you're ever not sure where something gets plugged into, refer to the manual. I've built quite a few PCs in my life. I still always refer to the manual just to make sure I'm not screwing anything up. You want to be precise. Um, with PCs because certain pieces have very specific tasks and you don't want to plug them into the wrong port otherwise you may get a little fire some parts may get overheated so you want to make sure everything's getting the right amount of power and is plugged into the right spot so everything functions the way it's intended and next we've got the IQ H100 Elite Capellix all-in-one water cooler I may get a little bit of crap for picking this one out I know a lot of people prefer the more fancy build-it-yourself water coolers for the sake of building 10 computers over the next little bit, we ended up going with the all-in-ones. One, to match the Corsair theme, and two, just for sake of simplicity. These ones actually perform quite well. They're very quiet once they get going. Um, when I ran a benchmark on a, another i7 build using this specific cooler, I didn't really hear any noise coming from anything at all. 
So they stay cool, they stay quiet. I know during those benchmarks, the temperature never went above, I wanna say 50 or 60 degrees Celsius for the processor. You've got your radiator and you've got your pump. The pump is full RGB, so once we plug it up, it's gonna glow nice and pretty. Other thing it comes with is a replacement faceplate. So if you don't like the way that this one looks, you can swap it out for a little bit cleaner one, but it won't show the RGB LEDs built into it. And then you've got the mounting bracket for the back of the motherboard. And then we have to screw in the fans to the radiator. This is one of those cases where, or one of those situations where pulling out the drive bays is going to be more beneficial because to mount this on, we actually do need to remove the drive bays. Otherwise we don't have the space to get to it. In this case, it's one screw and one clip. You also have a couple mounting ones on the back. Uh, you've got a total of four. So you also wanna remove those. So now that those screws are removed, it just slides right out. Get a nice little piece of styrofoam. And then there is your storage dock. The reason we wanted to do that was so we can access these four screw holes to actually mount. Nice thing about these is they just slide to adjust. There we go. Now that that bad boy's in there, flip this back around and get the mounting screws popped in. There we go. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and get the fans mounted onto the radiator because it's a lot easier to do that before you mount anything than after. Now we just pop through using our nice iFixit tools. There we go. So now all these should be able to pop off with a little bit of pressure and you can twist them off with your fingers. Now that all those screws are unscrewed, just take this guy out. I'm gonna go ahead and get it mounted on the right side just because that's how we've done the rest of them so far. All right, so now that we've got a couple screws prepared, we're gonna go ahead, get these in just a touch. Now that we've got some holding them in, we can release it, get the last couple. All right, that is all mounted and good to go now. So now we just need to take these cords, feed them through to the back so we can plug them into the bridge we're going to be setting up momentarily. That's the nice thing about the case having the cable management and the power supply on the back is that all the cables are hidden except for them feeding through for the most part. What we need to get going is get the actual water cooler mounted. Now I do it sideways, but it's just a lot easier to do it this way. So, and one of the things you always wanna make sure you do when you are mounting a water cooler is you want to do diagonal instead of like top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. That way you get an even distribution as you do everything. Now we're gonna give these a nice little tighten down. Nice thing about this case is that we can feed stuff through. There we are looking pretty clean so far. So it does come with the fan pump, which depending on the slots you have on your motherboard, it is going to depend. But in this case, we are plugging it into CPU fan as the manual specified. Now we can dig into the nice upgraded bridge that our cooler came with. So this one has how many? Six fan slots and six RGB hub slots. That way you can plug in pretty much as many fans as you need to. Now, since we do have two, theoretically you could plug in both of the hubs. So if you have say, I guess 10 fans total, you'd be able to all plug them all into a hub. Um, but I'm pretty sure they also do have expansions for these. So this one's just gonna sit nice and neat on the back. I'm gonna end up mounting it either right around here or on the front side, just so it stays out of the way. But that's why I pulled all of these cables through because we already have 
the fan cables right here. And then we've got the rest right here. They're labeled to RGB hub. If they're not, they're specifically for the fan control. So now what we'll do is we'll go ahead, just start plugging these in. We have RGB, just rinse and repeat the rest of the process. And then this one, you don't want to forget, this is the supply and color for the pump. So what we're going to do now is set that guy off to the side temporarily. Then we'll come back around to the other side so I can fish things through. I'm sure somewhere, somehow, BJ's watching this without us knowing and just going, Jack, you idiot. So now, since we've got the RGB hub connected, we're just gonna start feeding some of these cables through and connecting them to the motherboard just so there's less mess on the backside. All right, so now we're gonna feed the audio through. Most motherboards will come labeled with where to plug them into. But again, if you're not sure, refer to the manual. You can also, there's a little trick for some of them because they'll have a certain amount of pins plugged in that are unique to that specific port. So and then this is the one you are going to want to bust out the manual for just to make sure you plug them into the right spots because these do have important purposes to them. The ones we are about to plug in are the ones that actually tell your computer, hey, I wanna turn on or hey, I'm restarting. These are gonna be your power leads that connect to the power button and the reset button on top. But in general, they are going to be the same across most motherboards. So you don't have to worry too, well, I mean, obviously you wanna be careful with them and make sure you plug them into the right one. But on most motherboards, it is the same. So if this isn't your first rodeo, you know what you're doing. But if not, pop out that manual, make sure you do things right the first time so you don't have to go back and do it a second, third, or fourth time. So, and your system panel is going to be your IO at the top. There's a couple different cables that'll plug into it. In our case, we've got USB 3.0 and uh, USB type C. So those do have different connectors on there. Those ones are really easy to plug in because they like specifically with the USB 3.0, there's only one spot it can plug in. So now that we've got those pieces plugged in, I'm gonna go ahead and pop this on. So just loosely tighten these down for now. We're gonna go ahead and get our USB 3.0 plugged in, which has a really easy port. It's right under the motherboard power. Best way to tell if you're plugging it in right is there is a little tab to help you line it up. Do it a little wiggle sometimes. There we go. So now we've got that in. All right, so now what we've got left, the fun part everyone likes to see, the burr machine, the graphics card. Today we're going to be putting in a Tough Gaming RTX 3070 Ti. There are ways to save money. You don't need to buy the best, the latest, the biggest components for everything because a lot of them are gonna be comparable. Some people prefer AMD like myself, some pr people prefer Intel. It, a lot of it comes down to what you're willing to pay for the part and then price to performance. All right, we've got that nice 3070 Ti. That's gonna be the beef machine for this. This is gonna be what processes all of the graphics allows us to make our games look pretty. Um, if you get an RTX, they support what's called ray tracing, which will make shadows, sunshine, everything graphics related look a lot cleaner. All right, so, and then one thing I do wanna touch on with this motherboard specifically is that you do have two different PCIe uh, X16 slots on here. They both perform within about 1% of each other. So if you're not looking for 100% of the full potential and you're fine with 98, 99%, either slot will work depending on how you want it to look. I'm going with the top slot because it's also reinforced. And with how heavy this card is and how thick it is, I have a feeling we're gonna want to utilize that. Then, 
get ready for this guy to install. One of the nice things is that it has a quiet mode and performance mode that you can change with just this switch right here. You don't wanna do it while the computer's on. You wanna flip that while it is off. That way you don't affect any of the circuitry. Pop this bad boy in. If we can get it lined up. There we go. All right, now it's just screwing it back in so it keeps that support. Do not forget these screws, that way your graphics card can actually stay standing. All right, so now all we have left is getting the last bits of power going. It's always an anxiety inducing experience, like, oh, please, please work. Don't make me go back and redo anything. So this one is a beefy card, so it requires a good bit of power. Get all the pins plugged in. So now we've got everything all plugged in and good to go. I'm gonna pop on back panel real quick. All right, so what we're gonna do real quick, now that this is all done, I'm going to clear off my desk get the monitor set up so we can actually see it go to BIOS the first time, and then we'll be in business. So, got our monitor ready to go. So here, flip this on. See the nice pretty LEDs. All right, PC is all put together, powered up. Got the pretty RGBs going on, which as I've said a couple times, definitely gonna help your game performance, make you the coolest gamer out of the bunch. Just gotta make sure everything posts. Anytime you start up a computer for the first time, the motherboard's usually gonna read off what it contains on the screen. So you can see we've got the Asus Z590 Gundam Edition, the 11th Gen Intel i7-11700K at 3.6 gigahertz. We also have 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM, recognizes one keyboard, a mystery mouse that isn't even plugged in. Also recognize that we do have the Samsung 980 Evo uh, SSD. If you want to go into the BIOS, which is essentially the motherboard's brain, tell it what configuration you want, you have that chance to. But just for sake of simplicity, we're gonna go ahead with the optimized start just to get into it a little bit quicker. Here on the BIOS, they have gotten a lot better as time has gone on. So it's just gonna go over all the quick and dirty details. And at this point, this is where you would want to get a Windows 10 USB or whatever operating system you want, whether it's Linux, Windows, anything else in between, even though you're gonna have a bad time putting Mac OS on one of these. But you would load that onto a USB drive, plug it into one of the ports on the motherboard, and then reboot it. You'd see it come up as an option for the boot menu, install Windows, and you're good to go. That completes the first PC build in Pretty RGBs. So that completes our first gaming PC build for tech and toys. We're gonna to be putting together a whole bunch more of these over the next couple days as we start building out the gaming team. Thank you for tuning in to Tech and Toys. I'm very happy to be back. I'm excited for what we're gonna keep doing with this and where the future of this show is gonna go. So if you enjoyed what we did today, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff. And most importantly, let us know what you wanna see. Uh, we like reviewing the weird tech. Like I'd love to do a review on some Raspberry Pis or a custom Game Boy. So let us know in the comments because we want to review the things that you guys are curious about. I've got a never ending curiosity. So throw all the weird tech my way and I'd be happy to run to Micro Center or order it online, take a look at it, break it apart, see how it works and then give an honest review on it. I give this case a two thumbs up other than the little bit of blood it drew for me, but I've built in a lot worse PC cases before that left my hands scarred. Tune in next week and we'll see you guys next time.